In 1999, popular actor Tim Curry would voice act in his first role related to the Scooby-Doo franchise. He would voice the central antagonist Ben Ravencroft in the second highest ranked Scooby related film, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. Not too long after this, in late 2000, he would be asked to play the villain in the first Scooby-Doo live action release. However, he would end up declining this offer after learning that his least favourite character Scrappy-Doo would play a major role in the film. Coincidentally, this all happened to coincide simultaneously with another project, Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights for the PS1 being cancelled. Developers Heavy Iron Studios were granted the license for Scooby-Doo games in 2000, and began making… whatever this is for the PS1. But by the end of the year, it was clear that the game wasn't going to function properly without a huge overhaul, so they decided to cut their losses and start a new game for the PS2 completely from scratch. This meant scrapping all their custom animated cutscenes as well as a majority of their enemies, including the main villain of PS1 Frights, the Phantom. Meaning that for the PS2 game, they decided to create a completely new villain, the Mastermind. And Heavy Iron offered this role to Tim Curry to be the voice actor, to which he accepted. All this together brought us the iconic final boss fight that ultimately made it into the final game. So why is all this relevant? While many people who grew up with Night of 100 Frights would eventually return to it through the form of speedrunning. The idea of trying to beat a game in the fastest way possible and using any exploits at your disposal to get the best time. Scooby seemed to be an amazing speed game to runners, due to its Metroidvania-like level design allowing for huge potential skips, and its smooth movement but sometimes jank properties allowing for cool glitches. However, one of the sections that stood out as being kind of underwhelming in a speedrun was unfortunately the Mastermind fight. Although great casually, the abundance of cutscenes, puzzles, and waiting around led to the whole sequence pretty much being an auto-scroller that took at least 4 whole minutes. But luckily, it wouldn't stay that way forever. Over the course of more than a decade, that 4 minute time has been lowered significantly by the ingenuity and optimization of speedrunners. And that's exactly what this video aims to detail, by breaking down the crazy strategies discovered to destroy this boss fight. Welcome to the history of Mastermind. In 2012, Fabulous Fish took on the task of performing the first ever speedrun of Night of 100 Frights, resulting in a time of 2 hours and 42 minutes, a respectable first ever run. His Mastermind segment was a 4 minute and 6 second segment, average for the time with only a few small deaths. His fight pretty much followed exactly what was intended, so let's take a look at exactly how everything is supposed to play out. After paying the 850 snack gate, he enters into Mastermind Part 1 where he's greeted to a cutscene from Shaggy, telling Scooby to save him by pushing the two buttons. After setting Shaggy free, he throws him out of the tank and exits through the door at the back. Now in the acid room, Fish attempts to float across these two blue platforms on the right to reach the other side, but messes up his timing on the first try. After successfully making it over, he watches the cutscene with the gang until the game lets him skip it, then pushes the button to enter the Mastermind boss fight itself, where there's another cutscene that's skippable after a few seconds. However, right after that, there is yet another cutscene that this time can't be skipped that takes about 10 seconds to finish. So maybe you're starting to see what I mean when I say there's a lot of cutscenes. The actual fight is then just pushing buttons and waiting for Mastermind to spawn three waves of enemies that progressively increase in difficulty, before he himself then teleports down and needs to be pushed into the electricity to finish the game. Also, where Mastermind spawns is completely dependent on luck, so it can cause runners a bit of time loss if it's suboptimal. But that's how the average Mastermind split looked like back in 2012, and this is pretty much how the fight would be played for the next three years all the way up until November of 2015, when the first real skip would be found for the boss. During 2012 to 2015, a few new runners started playing Scooby, and the game was becoming faster and more broken than ever. 
One of these new runners you may recognize from my previous video, Bazralian. In the early years of this game's speedrun, Baz was a prominent glitch hunter and runner. So after getting the first 38 minute run in any percent, he decided to finally try and make the mastermind fight faster. He decided to try and think outside the box using something that runners had actually known about for years. The fact that Scooby could move during this cutscene at the beginning of the fight. It was thought to be pointless because enemies spawn only when it's over. But one day, after doing runs, Baz decided to do some testing. That's when he figured out that it's actually possible to hit these two buttons in the electricity early before the first phase, which skips right to phase 2, thus being named Mastermind Phase 1 Skip. This in total saved about 15 seconds and had been the biggest discovery for Mastermind by far. But this isn't actually the Phase 1 Skip that we're familiar with today, because at the time, Baz wasn't satisfied. He wanted to make it even faster. This led him to discover, just a few hours later, a way to clip Scooby through the middle wall dividing the two areas of the room. Which turns out, also lets you hit the first two buttons to skip Phase 1, but also lets you skip the two cutscenes that you would usually have to watch at the beginning of the fight, saving even more time. Unfortunately, skipping this one cutscene also skips the iconic Mastermind boss fight music. But the time save is more than worth it. Debatably. So now the Mastermind segment has gone from a 4 minute split in 2012 to now about a 3 minute split in 2015, due to overall movement optimization and the help of Phase 1 Skip, which is already a huge time save. Yet something was about to happen to the boss that no one expected. On Christmas Day 2015, the Mastermind segment would become... slower. How is this possible? while well, due to a skip that Baz found in an entirely different level. Green Ghost Skip, or more commonly referred to as GGS. Green Ghost is the second boss in Night of 100 Frights, and up until this point was the only other boss in the game that speedrunners actually went to fight, since there were already skips for the Black Knight and Redbeard bosses. Runners thought that they had to go fight Green Ghost though, since the boss grants Scooby the Umbrella power-up that lets him float up this fan to reach the secret lab, which then leads to Mastermind. But Baz discovered that if you jump on three extremely precise invisible ledges, you can jump up this pillar on the left, and then bounce on a bat to reach the other side. Overall, this saved about 6 minutes in the any percent speedrun, but it did lead to some segments having to be done without the umbrella, making them slower overall. This of course included Mastermind. In Shark Room, you used to float to the two buttons on the sides, but now the fastest way to reach them is by using the Super Smash move to increase Scooby's distance just enough to reach the platforms. However, because this move has a landing animation, this loses about 3 seconds total in this room. Then in the Acid Room, Scooby can't float over the blue platforms anymore, so the only consistent way to land on them was by using another 2 Super Smashes, losing about 2 seconds. So overall, GGS is only making Mastermind lose about 5 seconds total, which isn't a huge amount of time loss, but it's still a mentionable development for the boss nonetheless. After all of these discoveries for Mastermind, new skips for the boss were becoming much harder to come across. There weren't even many theories on how new time saves could even be possible. Except for a few. In 2016, Baz once again found something new. He discovered that if he makes this Funland robot follow him to the barrier blocking the exit, then he can shoot a soap bubble at it, causing that bubble to clip Scooby right through the door to the exit. Skipping pushing the buttons and saving Norville. But although this skip may seem huge at first, it was only useful in some categories like 100% and cheap percent, but unfortunately didn't save time in any percent yet. This was due to the fact that the skip needed the soap power up to clip, and in any percent we skip the soap since it's slow to go and grab. And since runners couldn't find any way to go through the barrier without a soap bubble, it sadly couldn't be applied to any percent. However, there was one more theory that runners were starting to think about. Skipping Mastermind? Entirely. But to fully understand how that could be possible, we'll first need to talk about parallel universes. I mean, boss fight triggers. 
Some of you may be aware that Heavy Iron Studios went on to develop SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, one year after they created Night of 100 Frights. In SpongeBob, some of the mini bosses have an invisible trigger left in by the developers that actually ends the boss fight early if SpongeBob goes out of bounds and reaches the trigger. Turns out they also left something similar in Scooby for some of the bosses. For example, in Green Ghost and Redbeard, their power ups actually exist as items out of bounds in the level. But unlike in SpongeBob, we can't actually reach the power ups in speedruns because they're surrounded by a void warp trigger, which teleports Scooby away when he gets close. So how does this apply to Mastermind? Well, what runners discovered is that when clipping through the wall to do phase 1 skip, you can actually stay inside of it and jump up on some invisible ledges to get up higher. This doesn't get Scooby completely out of bounds, but it did let the camera move slightly above the boss fight. And that's when runners spotted this. A button located right above the ceiling of the Mastermind fight. It was immediately theorized that this could be a debug button to end the fight early, due to Heavy Iron's tendency to leave developer triggers in the boss arenas. But again, there was no known way to reach this button to see if it actually even did anything at all. Glitch Hunters tried lots of different ways to clip out of the room, like trying to find holes in the wall or using glitchy terrain, but no one could find anything useful. And that's unfortunately how it would stay for the next few years. 2017 would come and go with absolutely no new discoveries for Mastermind, it was starting to seem like there may be nothing new even left to find, but that wasn't going to stop anyone from investigating further. In 2018, a level editor called Industrial Park was released, that allowed for editing on Heavy Iron's first 5 PS2 gen games. This meant that the community could finally look deeper into some of Scooby's levels. This led to a relatively new runner and glitch hunter by the name of Sam to rediscover the Out of Bounds button later that year. She would find out using Industrial Park that it was actually named Ryan's Button internally, likely referring to one of the game's programmers, Ryan Mapes. This furthered the idea more that the button could possibly be a trigger to end the boss fight early, and everyone was excited. But unfortunately, this idea would finally be shut down a few months later, when Fabulous Fish would move the button inbounds so that Scooby could actually press it and see what it does. And it turned out that it did... nothing. At least nothing useful. It would later be tested some more, and to the community's knowledge, all the button does is start the fight rather than end it like most predicted. This was disappointing news for runners at the time, but what many didn't realize is that this investigation did actually accomplish one thing, and that was getting one of the game's most crucial glitch hunters for the upcoming years looking into potential mastermind theories. Throughout 2018 and 19, the game would undergo one of its least active periods in the speedrun's entire history. A runner named Admiral had achieved the first 25 minute speedrun, but the next minute barrier wasn't even close to being possible. This led to excitement around the game in general decreasing a bit, and many would begin to take breaks or stop running entirely. However, one person who was active this whole time period was Sam. She would continue to look into different levels, different theories, anything that could potentially be useful in understanding the game better. This allowed her to become familiar with all of the game's history more than most people, including forgotten Twitch clips of weird stuff that no one could explain, or lost strat ideas that never came to fruition. One night in April of 2020, when looking through old clips, one particular clip of runner Epicness in the shark room would catch her eye. The clip was of him swinging from Shaggy's legs and getting very close to the ceiling, potentially close enough even to clip through. If this were possible, then there was potential to maybe navigate Scooby from on top of the ceiling over to the door to leave the level, which would skip the entire shark room puzzle. This finally piqued Sam's curiosity enough to open up the game and begin searching for the first Mastermind time save in almost half a decade at this point. And as you would expect, when she experimented with the idea, she would end up discovering... nothing. Nothing came of this epicness clip. Out of frustration, Sam just started jumping at the door where you do subclip, and that's when the unthinkable happened. Sam jumped straight through it. On complete accident, when just trying random things, Sam would discover a more than 30 second time save in the Mastermind split. In order to record the skip and send it to others on the Discord, Sam had to figure out how to recreate it. She discovered that when originally performing the clip, she had been holding the D-pad, and this detail happened to be important. 
It turns out that when switching from left to up left on the D-pad and then pressing jump, Scooby would have the perfect angle to just go straight through the door. This was also the reason that no one had discovered this before, because it was such a specific set of inputs to perform. And this skip would end up being one of the single most influential discoveries in the game's entire history, due to its almost perfect timing with the current world events. When a new skip is found in a speed game, it will often make old runners return, and this was no exception. But with everyone stuck inside due to COVID, this also led to a popularity boost never before seen for the game, introducing several new runners at once. And with the excitement of a potential sub-25 minute run, as well as dethroning Admiral's two-year old record, the future of Scooby and the new discoveries were looking bright. This would all lead to Baz to return to world record attempts in any percent, and after only a few days, he would get a brand new world record with a 2554. After this, Baz would continue lowering his world record over the next few months, while the new runners, or potentially new world record contenders, were learning the game. But while grinding for records, Baz decided to implement a new strat in Mastermind never attempted before, known as Frame Perfect. For a few years, Baz had been saving a few frames over most runners, like Admiral, by purposefully getting hit by the electricity and using those invincibility frames to hit the button as soon as the game let him. But it turns out, there's actually a faster way to do this that runners have known about for years, but no one dared to try it up until this point. When Scooby stops charging, there is one frame where his helmet can still interact with things, but it won't play the bonking animation, which loses about a second every time it plays. So clearly doing this strategy to skip bonking on buttons would save time in Mastermind, but unfortunately, there's a few problems. Firstly, it's a frame-perfect trick, and although the GameCube version only runs at 30 frames per second, timing releasing B in 1 30th of a second is still very difficult to pull off consistently. But also, when Scooby begins charging, the game doesn't let you stop until he's at least been charging for about a second meaning that Baz could no longer take damage to hit the button immediately if he wanted to attempt a frame perfect on it, so missing these frame perfects could potentially lose much more time than just not even attempting them. Overall, frame perfects in Mastermind had the ability to save about 3 to 4 seconds, but would require multiple frame perfect inputs, which doesn't sound very worth it to attempt in runs. But as the speedrun became more and more optimized, these frame perfects would become increasingly important. Throughout April to September 2020, Baz would implement frame perfects along with some other strats to try and lower the world record down to a 24, ultimately culminating in this run. Twenty-five oh two. Damn it, I got bad RNG. He ended with a time of 2502. A great run, but disappointing as he just barely lost the sub-25. Despite playing good in the Mastermind segment, the thing that lost him the 24 was bad Mastermind spawn luck, which is one of the worst ways to lose time. And unfortunately for Baz, the new runners who joined during the popularity boom had finally began to optimize their gameplay enough to begin reaching world record paces on their runs. Snowy Moogle was the one who had the honor of achieving the first 24 minute run on the 29th of October 2020. Snowy had started doing runs in June and had grinded hard enough to begin matching Baz. However, one of the key differences in Snowy's gameplay compared to Baz is that he played it more safe in some areas compared to trying to save every possible frame. This mindset also stretched to Mastermind, where he opted to not attempt frame perfects in order to stay consistent. Despite losing the record at one point to a runner called Jax, Snowy would continue lowering his world record using this mindset, all the way down to a 2446. However, the meta of frame perfects wasn't over yet as one runner was about to push Mastermind to the absolute limit. 
and that runner was me. After learning the run in August, I got my first 24 minute run on October 30th, just one day after Snowy's first world record. In order to compete against Snowy's consistency, I adopted a strategy more similar to Baz's style of play, by adding everything I possibly could to save time. This included attempting frame perfects on random enemies no one even considered risking before, and most importantly, reintroducing frame perfects to the mastermind boss fight. But not only that, I would also begin doing an optimization that no one had done in real time runs before, known as Smashless Acid. This involved timing a double jump onto the platform above the acid to skip super smashing twice. This saved those two seconds back, but risked missing the platform or just getting pushed into the acid by its downward momentum. So no one even tried to do this in runs. Until now. Compared to before Shark Skip, where a Great Mastermind was about a 235 split, now a Great Mastermind would be a 159, the elusive sub 2 minute split. However, so far, only Baz had gotten a sub 2 in a world record before, with Snowy's latest record having a 203. So with all that being said, I knew I had the potential to get my first world record in any percent. I just needed to play a run with little mistakes and a great mastermind to finish it off. For the first two weeks of November, I continued grinding, playing several hours a day, hoping to get the run I'd been waiting for. And finally, on the 14th of November, it would all culminate with this attempt. Going into Mastermind, this run was easily on world record pace, as long as I could get at least a low 2 minute Mastermind split. But nerves were also increasing rapidly, so it would be really easy to choke. This run finished with a 157 Mastermind, an incredible split for the time where I hit a frame perfect on the second button and didn't make any other mistakes, allowing this run to be the first ever 24 3x time. The only thing that could have gone better was not missing the first button frame perfect, but that only lost one second. Overall, despite Snowy eventually taking back world record, this was close to the peak level of optimization that Mastermind would reach. Eventually, runners would begin implementing an extra frame perfect on this second robot, meaning that a few people would get 155 splits. These were extremely rare, but truly proved how far runners had pushed the boss fight. Now Mastermind finally feels complete. Runners have no more ideas on how to possibly save time, and that's unfortunately where the history of Mastermind comes to a close. At least that's what I should be saying right now. But in March of this year, History would seem to repeat itself, where a huge skip for the boss was discovered by complete accident once again. On March 10th, 2022, I was at home sick with COVID, but I had also just started to play any percent again. So I was practicing frame perfects in Mastermind at the start of my stream when something completely unexpected happened. Cool. What? 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 I skipped a phase, right? I just skipped a phase. I had missed the buttons a few times when attempting frame perfects in phase 2, and somehow that made the game skip past phase 3 and just initiate the end of the fight. Since 2016, runners had been able to skip phase 1, but I had just discovered a way to skip the third phase as well, by complete accident. This meant that potentially we now only had to fight phase 2, but first I had to fully understand how this skip works. 
I first tried recreating the skip by hitting the buttons in the exact order that I did in the video. But eventually, it occurred to me that it wasn't the order that was important necessarily, but the timing that was crucial. So here's how phase 3 skip is possible in Night of 100 Frights. After you hit a button, the game gives you about 10 seconds to go over and hit the second button before the first button pops out to be hit again. But this mechanic can actually be exploited, due to how the game tracks when you progress a phase. The fight will check if you completed a phase through each time Scooby hits both buttons at once. This can be seen visually because a machine will turn by Mastermind each time you progress a phase. But by hitting one button, waiting 5 seconds, hitting the next button, and then going back to the initial button and hitting it once it pops back out, that means that both buttons have been pressed in at the same time, twice in one phase. This causes two of these machines to be turned during phase two instead of just one, thus skipping the third wave of enemies. This skip was huge for the game, as it not only saved an entire 14 seconds, but also removed frame perfects from the fight entirely, making it so much more consistent except for the RNG. And that's how the Mastermind boss fight remains to this day. 142 is the average split you'll see in runs, compared to the more than 4 minute split when runners started. Is there even any more time save left to be found? Probably not. The whole boss is so simple now compared to what it used to be, that finding a new time save or glitch is almost impossible. But that's exactly what everyone thought before Shark Skip or Phase 3 Skip was found. So who knows, maybe one day a brand new skip will be found by complete accident once again. I hope you enjoyed this video because I'm hoping to start making videos like this more often, so if you think you'd enjoy that then you can like this video and subscribe to not miss any new vids in the future. Also I do speedruns of this game live on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash tfxmortal, so if you'd like to see runs happen live you can check out the link in the description. But that's going to be all from me for now, thank you very much for watching.